I'm glad for the day the light come on in my life. Sometimes we wonder why people do what they do. It's just because they're sinners. They're in darkness. They're surrounded by darkness. But when the light comes on, that's when that we acknowledge we're in darkness. Sometimes we don't realize how dark it is until the light comes on. But oh, how precious is the light. Once the light comes on in your life spiritually, you don't like darkness. You don't like darkness. You try to stay away from darkness because you know what you did when you was in darkness. Man loves darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But whenever that you're born again and Jesus lets the light, because He is the light. You see, when He moves on the inside of you, the light truly is on because He is the light. He shines the light on the sin and the wickedness that's in our life. Come on, talk to me. Amen. I, whenever that we've got things that we've got hidden in our life, amen, as Christian people, it makes us nervous when the man of God starts preaching in the power and the anointing because it shines the light on the thing that we thought we had hid. But I'm thankful, bless His name. If, he's, if you're a real child of God, you're thankful for the light. If there's anything in my life that should not be, Lord, show me. Show me. How you show me through the Word. Amen. The Word is the light. He was, he was made flesh and dwelt among us. I'm thankful that He shines the light in our life. As little as you may, as much as you may think it, you ain't as perfect as you think you are. Amen. That's the reason the, it you'd have done been translated. Ain't it? Amen. He had this testimony before he was translated. He pleased God. Amen. He was close enough to God. God just took him on out. Amen. Lord, help us. Show us. Show us ourselves. Amen. So many times we want to, uh, I guess I'm just a redneck down at my mailbox. I hope that none of my neighbors is watching. Down at my mailbox, there's a whole line of them. So when I get my mail out, if I don't want it, I just put it in theirs. I do. If it's a bunch of junk, I just put it in theirs. And so that's the way we do when we come to church. Man, I know he ain't preaching to me. I'll just throw it over my shoulder. He might just be preaching to you. Amen. Amen. The mail that comes in your box is meant for you. Amen. It'll help you. It'll help us if we'll just live by it. It's good to be in the Lord's house, ain't it? Come on, young people, sing to us this morning.
taught the scriptures before I could read them. I found them to be true. That's why I believe them. With all
So often we come with preconceived notions. We stick with our programs. We go through the motions. Everything works out just fine. We get out on time. But I wonder if it makes heaven cry. If we say we love the one we deny. Do we need you enough? Do we want you enough? Lord, if we do, why are we in a rush? What has taken our time? What has blinded our eyes? We claim to love you, heart, soul, and mind. But Lord, if we do, Praise the Lord. Give me a little more volume, my brother. Well, I will say, being a Christian is not like going to Burger King. You're not going to have it your way. It's His way. And if you're a true born-again Christian, you know in your heart that your way didn't work. And you don't want it your way. You want it His way. And having it his way is, brings it right back to what David said opening up this morning. You have to crucify your flesh every day. And if you crucify your flesh every day, you'll realize after a few days of it, if I don't do this, I'm going to get in trouble. Right. Amen. So, Lord, I want it your way. Lord, I want it your way. Can anybody say that? Lord, I want it your way. Amen. I want you to know this morning he won't hurt you. He won't hurt you. He wants you to be more like Him. So it's going to help you. But in the process, you think it's killing you. And it is. It's killing you. But in order for your, when your flesh dies, the man that's on the inside can truly shine. Amen. Lord, help us to wait on you. If you have your Bibles this morning, you pray for me. This pollen is killing my throat. And I think 99 out of 100 people, it's the same way. And the other 1% ain't telling all the truth or something. And, uh, but it's, it's awful. And you pray that the Lord will just help us and, and uh, help us to have a clear throat this morning. Jeremiah chapter number 6. Jeremiah 6 and Daniel chapter 1. Both of these places are very familiar scripture. And um, I, I, don't really, I didn't really know which place to read or, or uh, what, to, what I guess you could say title of the message and that don't really matter anyway but uh, you just pray that God will help us this morning and try to get out what the Lord has given us. Very familiar scripture both places. Jeremiah chapter 6. When you find your place say amen. 
Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Daniel, Daniel, chapter number one. I'm just going to read part of a verse, and most of you probably quote it without even turning, but it's what God's given me. And I pray that God will anoint me and help me just a few moments this morning. Verse number 8 of Daniel chapter 1. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Well, I'll just read it all. Nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested for the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile Himself. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in reverence to the Word of God. Now, I, I do need you to pray for me this morning that God would help me and anoint me. And uh, I, I've been thinking for the last uh, few days, and, and uh, I've been thinking, I guess, about myself and about uh, the church and about uh, people as a whole and the time that we lived in. And I, I thought about that scripture in Jeremiah, amen, and I thought about it's just, it's just a recipe for, uh, for victory that, it, that, that they gave us here. And uh, the Bible said to stand in the ways and see. And uh, I, I don't know how you interpret that, and it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to give it to you as the Lord, amen, gives to me. And as I guess if I was somebody that was looking for a way to go, and I, I was looking at the ways that is uh, presented in, 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 in you humanity for a way to take, amen. I look, I guess if you're a people follower, uh, you would jump on the, the broad path. And because uh, the Bible said that there's a broad path that lead us down to destruction, and many there be uh, that go in thereat. There's a broad way that you can take. It's an easy way. It really is. Amen. But the end thereof is the ways of death. Amen. I'm thankful this morning. Everybody here was born, amen, in sin and shape and in iniquity. Amen. I, 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 I thought as Johnny testified last week, and I got saved when I was a young boy, and I do appreciate that. Amen. That I don't know a whole lot. Uh, the scars that in my mind uh, that could be in my mind that's in some of y'all's mind amen I'm thankful that I don't have to deal with that but I do have to fight the devil and don't you think for a minute that I don't amen I'll tell you how the devil fights me brother Ethan uh, these, uh, uh, he'll, I'll be sitting there on the pew and, and somebody will get up and testify about how that God's brought them a mighty long way and how that he saved them from drugs and alcohol and uh, brought them out of a lifestyle of sin and, and it's quite obvious that God has made a change in their life. I mean whatever they say, they put me in jail, I'd come out and go right back to the hog pen. And I'd go to them AA meetings, I'd come out and go right back to the bottle. Amen. They tried to change my mind, but when Jesus come in my heart, he turned my whole life around. And well I'll tell you what the Lord, how the devil fights me. And when somebody like that gets up and testifies, the devil will say, now you can't prove to me that they been any change in your life because I didn't do all that because I was afraid of the rod of correction from my daddy as a young boy hey, I didn't go places because he said don't go hey, amen I didn't argue with him I just didn't go hey, amen because I was afraid of my daddy hey, amen but one night at an old fashioned meeting and the power of the Lord come in that place and it got a hold of my heart and I come to an altar and I got saved and born again and the devil tells me you ain't got no change in your life you never quit drinking, you never quit cursing, you never quit any of that can you prove to me that you've been born again, I started thinking about the nights I'd sit in that bathroom and sweat because I was afraid I was going to die and go to hell, I could hear that preacher man saying, there's a 
heaven to gain and a hell to shine. Amen. But that night when I got up off of my knees, I've never felt so good and clean in my life. Even though I, he never delivered me from alcohol, amen, he delivered me from that weight that was on me and God was rescuing me from a life of sin. So I want to go ahead and stop and thank the Lord that I've been born again by the blood of the Savior and I'm not going to hell. Praise his holy name. I'm glad I chose the good way. I said I'm glad I chose the good way. There is a broad way, but thank God for the old ragged cross that I turned to that day and I'm glad I'm in the good way. Stand ye in the ways and see. And see. What do you see? A bunch of junk is what I see. Amen. Somebody said the reason the eggs were so high, chickens don't know if we're a rooster or a hen. Come on. I mean, they get in the pulpits, homosexuals. And they ain't been born again. They say, one old preacher that I know in Tennessee has a feller come up to him and said, you can't preach against that. I was born that way. He said, I don't doubt that. That's the reason you need to be born again. Amen. When you're born again, he changes that lifestyle. Amen. It's directly against the word of God and he ain't going to keep you in it. He's going to save you out of it. Amen. When he saves you out of it, when he moves in, he cleans you up, buddy. Amen. You'll no longer be a homosexual. You'll no longer be an alcoholic. You'll no longer be a dope head. You're a child of God and he's going to treat you like one. If you want to go to heaven, I said if you want to go to heaven, you have to be submissive to the hand of the master. And if he says get rid of it, get rid of it because this old path is the good way. Amen. Amen. It's a good way. Stand ye in the way and see. And ask for the old path. He ain't going to beat you over the head, Tammy, and tell you to walk in this old path. Holiness, holiness is not a way that's sought out and people beg to live. You have to want to be like God and ask for it. God, show me this old time way. What can I do? Don't search the scripture. Amen. I've got a person that's in my life and I wouldn't call his name for nothing. Amen. But you know what? He loved to deer hunt and I love to deer hunt. Amen. Follow me around. About the time the leaves start turning colors you'll find out. I love to do it. Amen. But he loved to do it too. But he got caught up in all of it. A one. Amen. And if, you, if you've been around this very long, you've got a very good taste of jealousy now when I feel that I back up Jimmy and I put it in park and I turn it off and I'm going to preach right here just a second jealousy I was raised up in it every year we'd have a meeting buddy I don't know why I'm having to preach this I don't like preaching when I have to tiptoe, so I'm just not going to tiptoe. We'd have a meeting. We'd pay our dues. We're going to lease this piece of property. We're all going to have a good time hunting. Man, I can't wait to go hunting with you, John, until. Can I tell you my personal experience? Man, alive, I had my tree stand in a place. And there was so many muscadine grapes that when I come down through the valley to cross the creek, I could smell them. I'd go over and get in my tree stand. Before daylight, I'd see limbs shaking, and I'd look up, and coons would be up there in them muscadines. And it's like all the deer in that county had a string on them. And they'd come over and eat all them muscadines. I was having a time of my life. And I'm the kind of fella that when we come back to camp, I like to say, I've seen 25. Man, I had an awesome morning. But you see, over here's another fella that didn't see anything. Well, next morning when it gets daylight, I look and right there sits somebody in my family. How did I get to here? what I thought 
He was jealous and I was jealous. I'm jealous he moved in and cut me off. There's arrows flying down there that should be mine. So this person got in the mix of all of that and he seen how that was affecting his walk with God. He sold everything that had to do with deer hunting and he's never been again. Stand you in the old path and stand you in the way and see and ask for the old path. Lord, if this means it's going to cause me to have jealousy that's going to run my brother down, it's better to sell my guns. It's better to sell my bow. It's better never to buy another four-wheeler. It's better never to have no more corn and go to heaven than it is to live in misery with jealousy. Amen. If you want to live close to God, when God gives you the recipe for how to be more victorious, amen, walk in them old paths. For it is the good way. I said it is the good way. They sings in all of our lives. Amen. If we'd have quit a long time ago, we wouldn't have the scars we got now. But God help us today. Amen. To be like old Daniel. I'm going to make a determination today. This world's full of things that will defile me. But I'm going to purpose it in my heart. I'm not going to defile myself. Amen. These people in here this morning, and I hate to say this, Brother Johnny, but we've lived to a time, and it always has been as long as we've lived, but it's really bad now. But they said, we're not going to walk in them ways. I just told you, it's a good way. I said, it's a good way. Amen. The way that you walk with God is the best way. Hallelujah. As they're flying past you on that broad path of going down to destruction and we're going uphill of fighting every step. I told somebody this morning, she come up through the parking lot and she said, buddy, it's been a struggle. I said, when you're fighting uphill, it's going to be a struggle. But can I tell you, hold on, we're almost there. I said, hold on, we're almost there. This is the good way. I said this is the good way. I got somebody walking with me. I know it gets rough. Amen. It goes against our flesh but it's the good way and you need to determine don't say I ain't going to walk in that way. You say I'm going to walk that way and I know God's going to help me. Hallelujah. Now you can find you a church that's packed out this morning. And I wish ours was. And the man that gets behind the pulpit or the woman or whatever it is, you know I'm right, will tell me, I got the best compliment I've gotten a long time yesterday, and I ain't going to say who it was from. He said, this is the only church that I've ever come to that y'all don't take up one offering a week. Everywhere else you go, that's all they care about. And we got to make sure we get them dollars. Now, if you're saved, you'll want to pay your tithes. Amen. Let everybody else on the radio land here. Amen. I'm not going to beat you over the head and make you feel guilty when you don't. Because if you'll read your Bible, the Bible said, try me and see. Amen. Amen. If I'll not pull you out a blessing that you won't even be able to be to contain. Amen. Men will give unto your bosom. Press down, shaking together, running over. Will men give unto your bosom? But when you give to God, you give it to God not wanting nothing back. You say, God, don't do stuff like that. I'm not going to beat you over the head and make you feel guilty if you don't. God will get it. I can't afford, as a man that used to go down there to Brother Johnny's and come to Brother Johnny, and he said, I can't afford to pay my tithes. Whatever it was he owed that Sunday on tithes to God. All that stuff that broke at, during that week took exactly that much. I pay my tithes and my stuff still breaks. I couldn't imagine if I didn't pay my tithes. 
Brother Johnny sits down there at Franks and waits on me. And he said, when that truck comes over the top of the hill with one light on, I just go ahead and get out and start getting my stuff together because I know that's my son-in-law. Hey, Amen. I put it on bright, this light comes on. Put it on dim, it goes off and this and comes on. So it don't make no difference. I'm dim either way. Hey, Amen. But I'm blessed and I am in the old time way. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I said I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I do what I do because I love him. I've got the convictions in my life and in my family because I love him. I can't find it in the Bible, but I find that it pleases him. If it means looking more like him, I say let's do it. If it means acting more like him, let's do it. Let's determine in our heart we're going to be more like him. Amen. These preachers now tell you you can live and shack up. You're okay. That ain't, that ain't what the Bible said. Amen. The Bible said whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Amen. So you can't get away with it. That one preacher told this boy that we know we're around him a lot in the fall of the year, especially. He's living with his girlfriend, so he asked the preacher, he said, okay. Him and Owen, it wasn't. I heard what Red said. She'd been told all her life, as long as you've been saved sometime during your life, life, you can do what you want to and still go to heaven. If you've got any sense at all, lay something down inside of your being that says, that can't be right. That can't be right. Amen. Somebody said, told, told Johnny, said, well, you got it all wrong. Said, once, once you have a son, he's always your son. And I love what Johnny told him, and I've told him many a person. You're right. He is always my son until he dies. Then he was my son. Then I had a son. I had a son, but I still have two. Did you hear me? Come on. So don't let the world, don't let the people talk in your head. You got saved when you was in Bible school 114 years ago. And I, I know I drink and I live in adultery and I do all this, but I'm still good. No, you're not. No, you're not. He's a jealous God. I said he's a jealous God. And if he's a God that'll send his son bleed and die for you, amen, and forgive you of all your sin, amen, you are to sanctify yourself to be more like him and ask for the old path. Ask for the old path. Don't try to get away from God to see what you can get away with. Amen. See how close you can get and see how much power you can have in your life. Amen. Somebody said, what if you get to heaven and you realize you could have been doing all that stuff? That ain't got nothing to do with it. Amen. What if you had got to heaven, Mel, and they told you you wouldn't have had to dress like that all them years? You've, you've missed out. You know what she would have said? That ain't got anything to do with it. I purposed it in my heart. It ain't got nothing to do with trying to please you. It's trying to be more like a Christian for him. I don't, if I have to go out here with a loudspeaker in public and announce to everybody that I'm a Christian, something's wrong. Ladies... Your testimony is how you conduct yourself. <laughs> Your testimony is what people think about you when they see you. What do we call somebody that's walking the streets with her breast exposed and her thigh exposed? Revelation said that woman that come through with her thigh exposed was a great whore. Now we let them in the pulpit. We let them sing in the choir and sing special because we don't want to hurt their feelings. They need to be hurt. They need to be hurt because what you do is a direct thing. It says, okay, for my kids to do it. If they see you with beer cans in your truck, it lets them know what well, Brandon preaches. I only pick up beer cans. I don't drink it. Be careful about your testimony. I said your testimony. It does matter what you do. You say, I don't care what people think about me. You better. You better because it's your testimony. Help us to act like a Christian and determine in our heart, I'm not going to defile myself. And when you determine that, you are going to face the fiery furnace. We, we praise God for the fourth man in the fire. Amen. But Aaron, it started with a determination. We will not walk therein. The book of Jonah should only have been written about a nation that turned their life around and went back to God because a man came into that city with a message. 
the first part of the book of Jonah should have never been written. But Jonah said, I'm not going. I'm not going to walk therein. I'm going to live my life like I want it. They've done me wrong. I want God to kill them, and I'm going this way while you kill them. And God says, wait a minute. That ain't the way I operate. You're in the old time way now. You've got to help me win them. They've done me wrong. That's the reason I'm going to take you over there to win them. God help us. How's your determination? How easy are you swayed? We talked in Sunday school. You have to be real careful the places that you put yourself as a young Christian. Because until you get rooted and grounded and determined, I'm not going that way, you'll be very easily swayed to take the king's meat. Now we come out of the land, we've come out of over here, of, we're captive. They led us, 10,000 of us. And we're offering all of you wine and meat. We never had that when we were slavery. So we're over here now and there ain't no mommy and daddy to tell us no. And I'm old enough to do what I want to do. You ain't going to tell me what kind of music I need to listen to. You ain't going to tell me where I don't need to go. I'm 21. I'll go down there and hang out with them if I want to. Amen. I'll tell you what's fixing to happen. You're fixing to get in trouble. Amen. Just because it flashes in front of your face don't mean you've got to take it. Amen. Amen. Just because mom and daddy, just because mom and daddy ain't there don't mean you still can't say no. Amen. You'll say no when they're listening, but when you determine it in your heart, it don't matter who's around, you're going to say, I don't want to disappoint the Savior. I'm going to live for him. I know we're way outnumbered, but you be assured the fiery furnace is coming and the fourth man will be there, but you hang on. He'll prove himself through your determination. Amen. Lord, help me to stay in this old time way. It's a good way. It's been a lot of times I said, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. That old preacher preached just like he was had a flashlight right on me. Tell me the things I was doing wrong, what I needed to do and what I didn't need to do. And I thought, who's he think he is? And the Holy Ghost would peck me on the heart and say, he's the man of God that's delivering the message and it's in your box. And you don't go many steps down the road after you say, I ain't doing that until you realize I should have done that. Hey, ain't, how, long, how far was you down in sin's prison when you realized I can't get out of this mess until you realized I wished I'd have listened? He that regardeth not instruction is a foe. When somebody walks up to you and says, young man, don't go down there. And I guess if I had a title to my message today, it would be, and he went on anyway. Young lady, you don't need to do that. You don't need to marry that person. Who do they think they are? God pecks on your heart and says, go talk to Homer and tell him to be careful. Next week he's got something coming his way. Be careful. Who does he think he is? I've had preachers that God has dealt with me. I said, call them and give them a warning. Tell them to be careful. I struggled to do it, but I did, and they got mad. They didn't heed the instruction. You know what they said in their heart? We will not walk therein. And they met that storm head on with the wrong attitude, and they fell. They fell. When I get up here and I preach on what you need to do and what you don't need to do, I'm not just beating the air. Please hear me. Please hear me. Them conversations you have at home with your, when your small children go to, go to bed and you say, well, I don't think there's any harm in it. We can take them over there. I want you to know, when you get there, the devil's standing there waiting on that with that spiritual fishing pole and got a can of worms. And it's got a hook in it. And as soon as you start, he'll hook you. And your children will always be the best at the worldly activities to pull you away from God. Amen. You can always have the ability to go further in this world if you would just give up on God a little. But can I say, at the end of the day, the trophies is going to burn. The trophies don't matter. 
all the things you've accomplished. You could build a 500 million mansions on every hillside in the country. And one of these days you're going to die and you're going to turn back to dirt just like everybody else. That don't matter. But when you leave this world, how many souls have you touched because of your determination? How many people have you touched through your ministry because you said, I'm going to stay in this old path. While he plays and we all stand, I feel like we all need to pray, God, help my determination. If somebody